Janning Journal is back with part two of the lawnmower build video series. Let me show you what I got going on in this video. Alrighty, we got the uh, one of the frames up here with a fender on it, got an axle in. Um, since the last video, I finished up and welded up all these cassette hangers on both, well, actually not both, all three mowers. Um, and then I also had to customize these draw bars. Um, unfortunately, the bolts where they bolted on were where I had to cut out, I had to cut that out to make it, uh, you know, fit around these cassette hangers. These are like quarter inch thick. So, um, had to modify those, which kind of isn't that good because usually these things help square your whole rear frame up. Um, but unfortunately, these are going to just basically be a cover and not really be structural. I'm also going to have to um, put some, cut some slots and then, you know, fill those in with uh, chain guards and stuff for. Definitely the sprocket and maybe, probably even the disc brake as well. So right now I'm just mocking it up a little bit. I've got a transmission in there. It's just, just sitting on the table though on some uh, bolts. Um, just trying to figure out exactly where my transmission is going to go because right now I'm making the transmission mounts. So for the mounts I'm just using some one inch angle iron, uh, eighth inch thick angle iron, drilling them Drilling the three holes, these are metric bolts. You gotta be careful, they're very close to 5 16 so you'll just strip it out if you're not careful and use the wrong hardware, at least in these Chinese ones. Um, I'm trying to get the shot here to show, but basically this, this angle iron's gonna cradle it right in place. Um, so once once you it's all welded in into the frame and you put the transmission in, it's pretty much gonna line itself up with all these bolt holes. Um, these are just cast aluminum housing, so it's really easy to cross thread and strip. Um, so right now I'm just going to continue to drill some holes in the rest of this and the rest of these uh, pieces of angle iron. This is just my kind of my like template one I'm messing around with. Uh, I am doing it in the drill press. Or I'm sorry in the well it is a big drill press basically but in the in the bridge port. It's not necessary. You can do all this by hand. It's just going to be quicker and honestly if I was just doing one one build I would probably do it by hand with just a little you know my little 12 volt drill here on the uh, on the bench but since I'm doing three I kind of got to get process work going you know and do it all do it all uh, mass production style I also took a ride up to the uh, local metals metal supply place uh, I got my front axle material I'm gonna go inch and a half by two uh, eighth inch wall thickness I used to always go two by two uh, so I'll try that out and then I got some couple different sizes of one inch square stock this is 16th inch wall thickness and this is 14 gauge so it's a little over 16th um, I'm gonna use this to strengthen the frame uh, run it weld them right along the bottom of the frame rails and then this I'll use probably for some transmission mount and just wherever else I'm gonna need them and then I got my quarter inch plate which is gonna be for my front plates where your heim joints 5 ace heim joints are gonna bolt in uh, you know on the end of the front axle so Got a decent amount of metal, not too bad. You know, it's like a dollar a pound. So I always buy a lot more than I need. So let me get to drilling these things and we'll see where we're at after that. Here's the, oh, here's the draw bar. I don't know if I showed you guys, but that's that. And I got the other two down there. So I took the fender off. I forgot to mention, um, I started talking about the draw plate squaring up the back of the frame. Um, that's really critical and necessary because you need to have your brakes, like for me, I'm just gonna have my brake, here's half of the, I'm using the MCP hydraulic brakes. I'm gonna just bolt it right to the side of the frame. Um, so that has to be perfectly square to the rotor. Those aren't floating, um, those, those calipers aren't gonna float. They're just gonna be bolted right on. So it's gotta be perfectly square. Also, you know, you're, you're gonna need your chain to be totally square, your sprockets to be square to the transmission and everything. So um, I'm gonna have to make sure that this, this frame is square. You probably can't see it in the, in the camera but the bottom is about a quarter inch wider than the top. So when I do make my complete transmission mount, I'm gonna weld that in place and I'm gonna use that in conjunction with the frame stiffening I'm gonna put on the bottom of each each uh, part of the side of the frame. I'm gonna run it all the way front, front to back to the front axle to the back. That along with the transmission mount, I'm gonna use those to you know carefully measure them and weld them in place to make sure that the rear of my frame is perfectly square uh, just how I need it and then those rear draw bar plates are like I said more or less just going to be a cover and a, uh, a chain guard and you know for the brakes and everything um, also you know you just you need it too but it's not going to be structural it's really just going to be to give it to give it the look 
So this is the bridge port operation. Um, as you can see, I just drilled my holes. I mean, the beauty of this is you can use the finished size drill bit. Like you really don't need to step it up and it's just gonna go straight through. It's not gonna walk around because the piece is clamped down so well. And then, um, you know, I put it in, I only have to jig it up one time and then I've already got one axis. Uh, I don't know, I forget if it's X, Y, whatever it is. But um, I only need to then measure, you know, this, this way um, in this order. Uh, and, you know, I just turn the handle, move the whole table side to side. Um, again, if I was just doing doing one set of transmission mounts, I would just probably do it by hand. But I got this at my disposal, so I might as well use it. All right, so you can start to see what I'm what I'm doing here. It's starting to take shape a little better. I've got my pieces um, all drilled out, all all three sets drilled out. These ones are bolted onto this transmission. So this is, I'm up, it's upside down, obviously. So this is the back, this is the front. So I'm gonna get some one by, this is just angle iron, but I got my one by square stock over there, tubing. And you know, I'm gonna weld a piece on the, on the back, on the bottom. And then the front piece is gonna go right up, right up here about, across the way. So um, it'll be easier when you see it, but the front part's actually gonna land just on top of this lip here. And then I'm not sure exactly where the where the back piece will be, so you know, somewhere down here. But um, next step is I'm gonna set my width, determine my width of my inside frame, uh, side to side. Um, I'll probably go somewhere up front. I'll you know go up in the front and measure exactly what it is up there, and then I'll uh, move that to the back because as you can see, there's not a whole lot of meat back here. The whole frame comes just to this one little eighth inch wide by I don't know two and a half or so. So the back is gonna wanna stretch uh, stretch and skew a lot. And this thing's just stamped. I don't want this to determine my uh, determine my width because I know it's a discrepancy between this and the front. Um, so yeah, I'll go off the front and that'll set my width for the whole thing. This isn't gonna be used anyways because this will leave my seat up too high. So, you know, this is just on to sort of keep it together at the moment. But um, I'll go ahead and do that. I'll cut up my one by square, six pieces each of that. And then, We'll revisit it. Alrighty, I determined my width to be uh, 12 and 5 eighths inside a frame. I got my one inch here, one inch square tubing. This is 14 gauge thickness, wall thickness. Uh, I'm trying to go a little thinner than I've always gone before and just you know save a little weight where I can. Uh, I just want to show you what I'm doing here. I'm using a 14 inch abrasive cutoff wheel, Milwaukee chop saw. Um, it's not the it's not the cleanest or most precise tool, but it's the quickest. And after you bought the tool, it's also the cheapest. Those blades are just like $6. I just bought a couple today. I mean, it goes right through. Works great for something like this, something you're just gonna clean the ends up on a bench grinder and then um, and then weld it in place. Um, but if you're cutting like chromoly shaft, not that I'm gonna cut this axle, but I'm gonna be doing my front spindles, you know, and I'll be using some 5 8 chromoly shafting. You know, you don't wanna cut something like that and try to put threads in it. You're gonna just, you're gonna mess up your tooling. Uh, on the lathe um, but you know you can use you can use a hacksaw if that's all you got you can use an angle grinder anything works it's all going to come out the same some things just might take a little bit longer than others so through the magic of television and a couple nights labor this is what we got we got our transmission mount all set up uh you know you pretty much saw how it was going to end up from from how it's going along but i ended up lowering it a little bit more than i planned on i cut this about in half as far as the height uh, and then I'm gonna have to reinforce it underneath, gusset it. I don't know if you can see, probably not. But uh, I just cut the bottom part out, so I'll definitely make sure I reinforce it to get as much support as possible when uh, when we finish this up because you know there's quite a bit of stresses on that. I actually got the other one done too. Um, it was just kind of plugging along on them. Didn't do any recording. Um, just wanted to get it done. This is the first one I was working on though, and I'm not too happy. Oh, also, yeah, I got all these uh, these welded in and all the frames. I'm not too happy with it. I just, I couldn't get this thing squared up. I mean, I was tweaking, I was bent, I was doing everything I could. It's still not square. Um, I got this side squared up pretty good. I think what I probably should have done was squared it up and, and jigged it and whatnot with like some, you know, made some wood wooden jigs or something, squared it up before I welded these on. I just kind of welded them on thinking that after I did that, I would I would have the frame parallel and then I could tweak it. But I, I really had to do that first. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not happy about that. I really don't like it at all. But um, what I'll do is, this is just a random piece of metal here. You know, when I do go to mount my brake caliper, 
I'll just make sure I have a, a nice backing plate, which I was going to do anyways. That's only, I don't even know if that's fully eighth inch, but I was going to put a plate in there anyways to mount it to. So when I mount the plate, I'll just have to make sure that that's perfectly um, perpendicular to the axle. So I'll have to weld it. I'm exaggerating the angle, but you know, I'll weld that on the angle um, just to make sure the brake, the brake engages perfectly square. Also, you can see on it, there are adjustments on the caliper. Caliper, these two, um, you know, silver colored bolts here. Those are adjustments to make sure that the uh, the pads are are right on square with your with your disc. I mean, I don't want those to be you know one tweaked in, one out. Uh, I want them to be as square as possible. But yeah, that's really all I need to do. That's really the only point of this being perfectly parallel is is for your brakes. Um, these bearings are self leveling. They'll go right up and down. Um, so that's not an issue. And then obviously I'm going to make sure, or I already did make sure that my transmission is, is perfectly level with my rear axle. And you also have to make sure it's level every single way possible. It's got to be level for your belt coming in from the front. It's got to be level side to side for your chain as well. So it's got to be right on. Otherwise you're going to be dealing with it, chewing up your sprockets, having belts come off, all sorts of stuff. And it's just not efficient. So losing power. All right, so I just got to finish up the transmission mount for my third mower. Uh, after that, uh, I'm going to get on to the brakes. I'll be mounting these things up. Um, but yeah, I'm just doing them in order. So like if I'm doing the rear axles, I do all three rear axles. When I welded these, I did all these. Transmission mounts, I do all of them. So once I get in a groove, I got all my tools and whatever I'm doing ready to roll. And I can just knock out all three. So after that, you'll be seeing me setting up the brake calipers. So I've got my pieces I'm going to mount my brake calipers to. Um, I'm just going with some quarter inch plate steel, three inch wide. This is actually what I'm going to use to uh, uh, for my front axle. So it's not, it doesn't entirely do the width of the uh, caliper, but that's fine. So again, these are just to reinforce the frame and to also give me a perfectly uh, parallel surface to the rotor. So uh, as you can see, there's no holes in them. I got them marked up a little bit. It's hard to kind of see, but uh, I'm going to take that over to the mill and uh, drill these three out, then pretty much bolt them in and, and, you know, try my best to weld it square. It's going to be tough. These ones I'm noticing don't seem to have the adjusters like my old ones. These seem to just be spring loaded to keep the, uh, the pad in place and they don't seem to be able to adjust it. So uh, that's, you know, that's probably not too bad. Um, they're not a full floating caliper but they will, uh, they will probably make up a little bit of uh, out of squareness. However, they won't wear evenly if that's the case. So still gonna do my best to make them square. Okay, I'll try to keep it brief. I feel this video's running probably way too long. Here's my plate with the holes drilled in it. Um, I have my caliper in there. That's pretty much where it's gonna go. It's basically just mocked in place. I've actually got the caliper clamped to the frame, just wedging it together. Uh, not much pressure. I'm definitely not gonna torque it too hard. So, and then I'm just using this just to mock it up, uh, make sure I've got enough room for that brake line fitting, which I do. I'm going to use a 90, uh, a compression 90 on the, on the inside one. So it's because it's pretty close to the uh, transmission and it's close like that on all three of them. Oop, accidentally zooming in. So it's close like that on all three of them. This is actually the third of the three. Um, and then also I'm just using a drill bit just to make sure my gap is absolutely the same in the front and back which will uh, then in, you know, ensure that it's, it's concentric as well. Um, so let me, what I'm doing now is I'm just going to use my uh, drill, just put some marks in through there with a 3 drill bit on the frame, drill those out. Then I'll be able to sandwich my, uh, my plate in there, and you'll see I'll shim this uh, before I weld it to get everything perfectly square. So let me get those holes drilled, and then uh, next you see it, I'll be uh, putting this thing in place and shimming it up. I've got my holes drilled and some bolts in there. I've got half of the caliper in place. And uh, what I'm trying to do now is square it up as good as possible. Uh, you can see I got my, my quarter inch plate back there. Uh, I'm just kind of now realizing I need to clean the frame, the paint off the frame, because um, obviously I'm gonna be welding that on there next. Um, so I got a little bit ahead of myself. Let me slide this out of the way we can see better. And uh, I got some feeler gauges wedged in there to uh, space this off of the frame. It's kind of dark in there. This one's actually wedged off the most. The first one was pretty darn close, but there's uh, there's quite a gap in there between the frame and this 
in this backing plate to get it nice and square. Uh, but it did do the job. This is gonna be perfectly square engagement. So um, what I've actually got to do now is just mark the perimeter of, of that plate, uh, clean the paint off, redo this again. I at least know how far I have to shim it out this time with my feeler gauges. And uh, bolt it back in place, tack it, take it apart, do the full weld. And then we're pretty much good on the rear end for a while. Alrighty, got everything welded up nice, nice. I just welded the corners. I didn't, I didn't do the whole entire thing. It's a quarter inch plate. Um, Everything is squared up perfectly. There's actually a little bit of run out on this rotor, but nothing bad. So I don't have long enough bolts to actually bolt the other half of the caliper in place right now. Um, so I'll have to order those, either McMaster car or I'll just go to the hardware store. I don't know. I get in the habit of using grade 8 hardware, which is probably entirely unnecessary. But um, yeah, so that's it for the, pretty much that's it for the rear end. The only other thing I'm really going to do for the rear end, um, I took the transmission out to weld and everything, is I just got to come up with a chain tensioner, figure out exactly what kind of idler, how big of an idler. I'm hoping I don't have to cheat and make some tiny little uh, non-toothed idler. I'm hoping I have enough room for like a regular 15 tooth, uh, 40 pitch idler to set my tensioner. But that's pretty much it for the rear end. Everything else is, is good to go. I got my seat, seat post uh, seat bracket here. So... Um, that's pretty much going to do it for the rear end. Uh, next step, we'll be tackling the front end.